Hello and welcome to Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. We're observing Global Energy Independence Day, and the aim is to raise awareness about the importance of alternatives to fossil fuels. The day also focuses on finding additional energy sources that are renewable and relatively non-polluting. Come, we have an exciting lineup just for you. Yes, walk right over there and drop it in the bin. Reuse that wastewater from your kitchen for the garden. Get your hands dirty and plant a tree. Farmers, hold off on the pesticides, especially near our rivers. Do your part to protect our watersheds so we can preserve the source of our drinking water. Every act to protect our watersheds counts. Start now. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, July 10, 2023. Ground has been broken for the Witton to Darleston Road Rehabilitation Project in West Belland. The $294 million project will be spearheaded by the National Works Agency, NWA. Construction is expected to be completed over an eight-month period and will be done by Morris Hill Limited. Minister with Responsibility for Works, Everald Warmington, says the project will be executed in two phases, starting with the Witton to Highgate section of the roadway, followed by Highgate to Darleston. He says the project symbolizes the government's commitment to sustainable development and its dedication to improving the lives of citizens. As a government, we strongly believe that an investment in proper infrastructure is a significant investment in the people. Roads and highways are the conduits of trade and commerce, which in turn drive economic growth and improve the quality of life for all. Rehabilitation of the 12-kilometer stretch of roadway will directly benefit residents in both central and eastern Westmoreland. Some NHD contributors will still be able to access benefits directly from the institution even after the external mortgage financing program EMFP takes full effect in August. Under the EMFP, which was introduced earlier this year, contributors will apply for their NHD benefits from the entity's financial partners, including banks, credit unions and building societies. However, the trust will continue to process loans for contributors within its 0% income band. That is, persons earning between minimum wage and $30,000 per week. Where these individuals need additional funding from another institution, those will fall under the EMFP. During a recent JIS think tank, the NHD's senior general manager, Dwight Ebanks, stressed that overall the EMFP provided many advantages to customers. It, it allows for easier mobility of mortgage. So the customer will be able to easier move, transition between financial partners if they're able to get a better, a better deal, a, a lower rate, a better loan, some better loan terms from the other partner, or just if they're not satisfied with the service that they've received. He explains that the NHD will provide monthly subsidies to the financial institutions over the life of the mortgages to compensate them for market return. Since the trust will not have to find lump sums of money to lend contributors, these funds will be available for reinvestment into the construction of houses. Under the new program, um, the NHC will no longer remit these funds to the financial institution. The institution will use their own funds to give to the to, to, to lend to the to the customer at the NHC rate. In order to allow or to facilitate that, the NHT will be subsidizing what is effectively a, a market rate. Um, for the institution. Minister of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Senator Aubin Hill, says government will be increasing investments in upskilling the labor force for the business process outsourcing BPO sector. During a recent function, Senator Hill hinted that funding for this was being arranged through the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. The government borrowed $15 million from IDB to upskill or, or the people who work in this sector. Not 
not to spend on consumer goods, but to invest in our people. We are upping this substantially, significantly. I, we're not ready to announce yet how much money is involved, but it's a lot more. And it's to train people. The Hill is also inviting the business community to join in the upskilling of their workers. All across Jamaica, I'm challenging businesses because, frankly, I know working elsewhere, we don't invest enough in, 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 in upgrading and upskilling our people. So I want to see more of that done. Meanwhile, the industry minister has welcomed the second of three 80,000 square feet buildings planned by IBEX at the GTEC Park Business Outsourcing Complex in Portmore. This latest GTEC Park facility was officially opened recently. After completion of the third building in 2024, the complex will accommodate approximately 240,000 square feet of BPO operation and employ 1,500 persons per building and up to 4,500 on a shift system. This is a momentous occasion for Jamaica as it marks another milestone in our journey towards becoming a global leader in the BPO and global services sector. The global digital services sector is one of the fastest growing in a very dynamic industry in the world, offering a wide range of services such as customer care, technical support, accounting, and advisory support, uh, human uh, resources, and more. GTEC Park is a $3.5 billion investment by developer Portmore Holdings and its CEO, Gordon Tawani. And finally, students at the Bethabara Infant School in Manchester will now have a chance to advance their sensory integrated skills through their new inclusive classroom. The Infant School welcomed the debut of a brand new inclusive classroom recently. It was established as a Jamaica 60 legacy project through the collaborative effort of the Ministry of Education, the Early Childhood Commission and Digicel Foundation. Executive Director of the Early Childhood Commission, Carlene Deslandes, says this initiative will help diverse learners to maximize their strengths and overcome their challenges. Inclusive education aids children by improving their cognitive, motor, speech, and social and emotional development through communication with their peers. The classroom will include a sensory space that has been meticulously constructed to engage and replicate all senses, with relaxing lights, textured surfaces, and quiet noises for students to explore. Education is at the cornerstone of a thriving society. And we firmly believe at Digital Foundation that every child, regardless of their ability or differences, deserves an equal opportunity to learn and grow. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. It's one of the most popular means of getting you where you want to go, whether by using public transportation, alone or as a group. But before you can drive off to your next destination, do you have your driver's license? If the answer is no, here's how to get one. So, you've acquired your provisional or learner's driver's license. And the next step is getting the real deal. Well, the process for getting each is a bit different, but nonetheless very achievable. Now, the, the, the fundamental difference between the provisional and the, and the driver's license is that with the driver's license, you can drive by yourself. But with the provisional, an instructor has to be there with you must be there with you at all times. Somebody who have a driver's license must be with you. So once you acquire a driver's license now, you can drive by your own. 
But before we go in to get this piece of document, we must have an idea of the type of license that we're applying for. Here in Jamaica, there are three categories available, a motorcycle license, a private license for motor cars only, and a general license, which is for any vehicle including motorcycles and public passenger vehicles. Now it's time to head to an island traffic authority depot. But don't leave these important documents. A completed driver's license application form, signed by a justice of the peace or a notary public, the examination fee receipt, your provisional driver's license or learner's permit, and three passport size photographs, also signed by a JP or notary public. First step we need to do is that we must be successful in the road code test and we must acquire the provisional driver's license. Now, when you would have gone to your instructor, right, your instructor would then decide when you are ready to go and do the test. You should prepare yourself for, for three things. The written test, the yard test, and the road test. You need to know how to navigate that motor vehicle right, safely without hitting down anyone. So you need to be, you need to be in control of the vehicle. Right? Know when to brake, know when to gas, know when to turn, etc. Ensure that you know your road code, right? know your road signs, know your road markings, know the responsibility of drivers, know the responsibility of other road users. Understand what the road marking signs mean, the, the white line mean, and know what they mean and obey them. So those things are very critical, right? So once you know these things, right, then you're ready to do the written test. The written test have to do with driving questions, driving issues. It's mandatory for all applicants to complete this written test. Individuals are required to read a sentence, then complete the written test where the knowledge of vehicle mechanics will be tested for general license applicants. And after you have passed the written test, then we take it to the yard test. During the yard test, applicants' ability to start on a gradient or hill, parallel park and reverse will be assessed. So there's so now you learn hill start. You, you, your instructor should teach you hill start, how to start on the hill, so you don't run back and create mayhem and crashing people behind you. So again, controlling the vehicle, very critical, right? So once you have done the hill start, you do the yard test, how you navigate the, the, the navigate on the road network, just as how you would have to navigate out there in the real world. So we put you in that control, it's a control environment, right? So we carry you through that navigatory process. Once you have exercised that safely, right, we are not, that is good. Another component of it is that we need to see a reversing skills. We want to see that reversing skill being executed and we want it to be done safely without creating any imbalances in the traffic environment. Once you have completed the yard test, the yard operations, yes, then we can take you out to the road. Because you would have proven to us that we must take you out to the road, right? Now, once, you have once we have taken you out to the road now, we give you some instructions, and the instructions should be followed, right? And you are assessed again. Once you have passed all three components, then you will be, then a certificate of competence will be issued with respect to you. Now, that certificate of competence now would then be used as the instrument that would uh, allow you to access the technology of a driver's license. Right? And uh, the, the tax office now would be the ones that would issue you with that car, allowing you to drive for that period of time. If you have not executed the components properly, you will then be required to um, come back, right? To do the components that you have failed, right? right? So th those things would have been documented, what you pass, and uh, whatever you fail, you will be required to come back and do it. 
And there you have it. The Island Traffic Authority's simple steps to help you achieve your very own driver's license. Everybody get ready. Right, it's festival it. time again. Jamaica, me yard, me yard, me yard, me yard. Oh, we dance the same way. People jump in the same way. We are real. Among the finalists is the seven-time festival song winner, Eric Donalds. Reggae, 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 Jamaica. Now you know the best in the world is Jamaica. June Award winner, Escoliva. He's like home. An artist named Hot Rod. More love and the land. Two mentor groups. Well, look about with Talawa. This is Jamaica. Best food and rich culture. Bim, 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 Jamaica, we burn and grow. A visually impaired female singer called Princess Black. We have to be go, mama, day. I'm really excited by what I consider to be the flood of quality entries in the competition. Oh, happy Independence Day, a Jamaica Independence Day. No way, no way, come on, yeah. No matter how they tell you, they might live big up on hell. No way, no way, come on, yeah. Don't go over, see, don't see, don't pan up on when. No way, no way, come on, yeah. With the approval of several transformation services, Jamaicans can expect more from their local post offices. But have you ever wondered just how the Jamaica Postal Service came to be and its evolution? Let's find out more in this next feature. Did you know Jamaica was the first British colony to establish a post office? Yes, that's right, a post office. In 1663, King Charles II, the then reigning monarch, instructed Sir Thomas Lynch, Lieutenant Governor of Jamaica, to make the necessary arrangements for the establishment of a post office in the island. But this was met with obstacles, and on October 31, 1671, Gabriel Martin was appointed postmaster general and was instructed to build the first post office in the then capital, St. Diego de la Vega, now known as Spanish Town. It was known as the Postal Corporation of Jamaica, which operated as a sub-branch of the British Post Office. Soon after, the need for reliable postal services grew, and in 1754, Edward Dismore was later appointed postmaster general. He then established a network of post offices throughout the island, many of which remain as major post offices today. In 1776, the main post office was moved from Spanish Town to Harbour Street in Kingston, and in 1860 came the ending of its sub-branch status with the British Post Office. Then came the dreaded 1907 earthquake, which caused significant damage to infrastructure within the parish to include the main post office. Plans were drawn up to construct a new building to include an automated central sorting office. Work started in the mid-1970s and the sorting facility fully commissioned in 1980. Today, there is a network of nearly 600 post offices and postal agencies with the central sorting office at the helm. In May of 1858, Jamaica used its first adhesive postage stamp. These were from Britain and were sent to the colony for use by the locals. In 1860, Jamaica got its own postage stamp. The first ones were valued at one, two, three, four, and six pence and a shilling. Soon, the need arose for a half penny stamp. 
the then postmaster general decided to permit people to cut one penny stamps in half, diagonally, and each half would have a recognized value of half a penny. The first pictorial stamp to be used by Jamaica offered a view of Landover Falls in St. Anne. This was in 1900, but the size and color of the stamp were not liked. The stamp was entirely red, and it was known as the bedspread with the Welsh name. So in 1901, Jamaica reissued the stamp in two colors, black and red. A set of four stamps which featured historic scenes were issued to commemorate the 300th anniversary of British rule in 1955. And in 1956, a series of 16 stamps were issued, showing various local scenery, plants, and animals. When Jamaica gained independence in 1962, these stamps were overprinted with the word independence and the year 1962. Today we see a revolutionized Jamaica with technology at its focus. Now we are able to ship and track mail packaging in real time across the globe with the click of a button. The Jamaica Postal Service has cemented itself as an outstanding service provider, delivering mail items both locally and internationally, the major plank of its core business. And in keeping with the mandate to increase revenue based on customer demands, Jamaica Post has, over the years, expanded its offerings with the introduction of premium services to better serve its customers. The challenges faced every day can be daunting for some individuals, and while some people will take these trials in stride, others need assistance to help them cope. There are signs that we all can look out for to help family members and other loved ones choose life as they maneuver these obstacles. It can be challenging for some people to ask for help even when it's just what is needed. And this is exactly why we should learn to listen, even when a person isn't talking. Every suicide is preventable. And the only way we're gonna be able to prevent these deaths by suicide, if we know the warning signs and know how to respond. If you find that someone is saying that they want to kill themselves. Whether it is a joke, because some persons say, I was only joking, or whether they are serious, they need to be taken seriously. And one needs to find out what is happening with them. Of course, someone feeling sad and even lashing out is not necessarily a sign that they will harm themselves. But if you want to take a closer look, these counselors recommend using what they call the pain scale. Assessing someone using this method means you need to identify if there is a plan and also investigate the means of executing that plan. The more detailed the plans that a person has to kill himself or herself, the more likely the person is. The person knows the place, knows the time, and knows the method is much more at risk than the person who just says, I feel like I want to kill myself. Then there's the intensity. 
the more drastic the method, the more likely the person will complete suicide. In Jamaica, hanging, uh, using the gun, those are the top ways in which people kill themselves. So, ask the question, have you had thoughts of hurting yourself? And if you were to do it, how would you do it? And, and we, the idea is to be able to separate uh, the person from the means of death. With this in mind, we are able to identify the nearness, as in how near the person is to doing the act. This is usually preceded by some signs. I often say to people, use your eyes, use your ears, and use your nose. What are you seeing? Are you seeing deterioration in the way they care themselves? Are we seeing deterioration in their energy level? What are we seeing? Then use your ear. What are you hearing them saying? I can't take it any longer. I am a bother. I, I feel like I want to kill myself. And sometimes the deterioration gets to the point where there is body odor. Use your nose. Is there something going on there where your self-care is so low? If you find that somebody is, is very depressed and all of a sudden, without any kind of intervention, they're just very happy and bubbly and everything is working well, it could be as many times it is that they have now decided that they are going to, to, to complete suicide. So they are no longer in the valley of indecision and feeling agitated. Now they are calm because they have made up their minds to, to complete the act. And so that is why you see that switch. So don't be fooled by it. Talk with them. Sometimes they are so depressed that what they need is to be stabilized by the use of medication. So get them stabilized and use talk therapy. Some who have contemplated suicide have shared that during such a time, they often felt deserted, which brings us to the support factor. Persons who are suicidal need a lot of support because it suggests that they are not coping with different aspects of their lives. And sometimes they believe, one, nobody cares. And that is why it is important to show them that we care by listening to them, by reaching out to them. But also realize that many of us are limited in our own ability to be able to help people who are suicidal, so get help. In Jamaica, there is the Suicide Mental Health Helpline, 888-639-5433. Call the helpline. Get to a counseling agency, choose Life International or a flagship with counselors across the nation willing to help, 920-7924. Get them the help they need and show them that they are loved and that they are wanted. When somebody has expressed doom and gloom and frustrations in life, it is not a time to condemn them, to tell them whether they're worthless and they're good for nothing and they're not going to come out with anything and they're ungrateful, but love them and care for them and be very deliberate. You don't know the story of the person that you're meeting on the street. You don't know the story of the person you meet at church or at work. You don't know what they went through last night. So be gentle with your word. words. Be willing to speak life over them. Be positive with them. Thank you for being with us today on Jamaica Magazine. Before we go, take solace in the words of American poet Maya Angelou that no matter what happens or how bad it seems today, life goes on and it will be better tomorrow. Join us again tomorrow for another interesting journey. Of course, you can visit our website, jis.gov.jm for more news you can use. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.